Trojan Sports Now. Hello and welcome to Trojan Sports Now. I'm Danielle Percival. And I'm Jonathan Sellers. Stick around as we bring you the latest news and scores from Troy Sports. Well, with the search for six out the window, we're back to the drive for five. Of course, that's referring to five wins, but there was also another significance to that number on Saturday. The Trojans had never lost five straight under head coach Larry Blakeney. That is, until they faced North Texas. For the second straight year, homecoming was not as sweet as Trojan fans might have hoped. Troy had a three-point lead heading into the fourth quarter, but fell to North Texas by a score of 38-33. to Though the Trojans are on their first five-game losing streak since 1982, head coach Larry Blakeney says they'll continue to fight. We'll continue to work. Uh, our problems ain't changed. They're still the same, but we're trying to get better, and uh, we'll continue to try to get better. And it's always magnified by losing. So, you know, we got a big old magnifying glass that would just produce right out there on that field. On Saturday, one area of improvement for the Trojans was offensive production. The past three games, Troy has averaged under 350 yards, but put up 383 against the Mean Green. The team also scored 33 points, which is the most they've posted during the current losing streak. Wide receiver Eric Thomas, who caught two touchdown passes in the game, says the offense was clicking. We hit on a lot of big plays, you know, had some big runs, some big catches. The whole thing, like we were doing good, we just came up a little short. Offensively, I feel like, you know, we made some strides, but at the same time we lost. So, you know, it doesn't even count. It doesn't even really matter, uh, you know, until we win. So that's all we're all here to do is to win. While the offense was able to move the ball, the defense still struggled to stop the opponent, allowing over 500 total offensive yards for the fourth game in a row. North Texas received the ball following a Troy touchdown with 7.43 left on the clock, but the Mean Green milked the clock down to just 15 seconds before they gave the ball back to Troy. Linebacker Brandon Bryan says this team still felt they had a chance. We're still in the game with seven minutes left. We just got to find a way to get a stop. And, you know, we were, that's what we were focused on doing. We still believe, we, I mean, after the loss, we still believe in our team and each other. We're never going to give up. The Trojans still have three games left on the schedule, and Robinson says, though it's been a tough season, they just have to get back on the right track. Just a, uh, a season-long nightmare so far. Uh, you know, it just seems like we can't find a way to get it done, uh, you know, throughout the whole game. So, I mean, I guess we're just going to have to keep searching for it, try to wake up. And that nightmare Robinson was just referring to has changed the expectations of this team. Entering the 2011 season, the Trojan football team had high hopes for finishing at the top of the Sunbelt Conference. The matchup against Florida International was expected to be a matchup of the top two teams in the Sunbelt. Instead, it was two middle-of-the-pack teams, and on Saturday, the two teams at the bottom of the Sunbelt standings will be pitted against one another as Troy placed host to Florida Atlantic. With a five-game losing streak and hopes for a winning season out of the picture, head coach Larry Blakeney says you just have to keep fighting. I think you got to take the next best thing, and that, that being uh, you know, winning the next game and winning out, uh, you know, some salvage something, uh, get better. A lot of things that we had set coming into the season, I mean, it's kind of out of picture, but I mean, we still have things to play for. But what things is Davis referring to? When conference titles and bowl hopes have been dashed, what is this team playing for? Even with a 2-7 and seven record, linebacker Canoris Davis says this team is still trying to earn respect on the field. We're going to go out there, we're going to fight. You know, win a record or losing a record, you still, you still got to make people respect you. You can't give up when, it's, when, it's, when everything is going wrong. That's, that's when you know who your leaders are and, and who wants to be here and who don't want to be here. It's when, you, when you're going through a time like this. But there's more to it than just earning respect. It's also about pride and momentum heading into the off season. Just try to carry any little bit of momentum we can over to next season, the spring, carry over the summer, fall workouts. I mean, just anything that can help this team grow and mature over these last three weeks. Yeah, I think this gonna you're gonna put a lot of people in check. And you know, when next year roll around when we start summer workouts, spring workouts, do camp and stuff, I think everybody's gonna work hard and try not to repeat this. The last time the Trojans lost six straight was in the 1982 season when the team started the year 0-7. The season opener for the men's basketball team looked to be a struggle on paper. The Trojans came in with plenty of new faces and were hitting the road to open up at a Big 12 team in Texas Tech. However, the Trojans put on a show in Lubbock but fell short 98-85. to 
The new full-court press up-tempo style seemed to throw off the Red Raiders. The Trojans forced 19 turnovers and had six steals, but had some poor shooting as well. Troy shot 47% overall, but made just 18 of 32 free throws. Will Weathers led the team, scoring 24 points. Then the Trojans returned home for the 50th and final season opener at Sartain Hall on Sunday afternoon. The Trojans won this one going away 116-63 over LaGrange College. Troy forced 29 turnovers, had 18 steals, and set a school division one record with 68 rebounds. Six Trojans were in double figures led by Allen Jones who poured in 23 points. In a game coach Don Maestri felt his team should have won, he was happy with some things he saw. This was a good game for us. Uh, we had, you know, tonight superior talent, so we didn't play uh, uh, the type of teams that we're going to play in the future, or like we played up at Texas Tech. But as far as uh, a game where we got to see our shooters maybe get back on track. While the home opener was a good chance to get a win, it was also an opportunity for home fans to see the Trojans' new style of play. Tiffany Lester has more. The Trojan men's basketball team opened on their home court Sunday night against LaGrange, and they started off right by winning 116-63. The team has been working hard to learn a new offense, and being able to watch their opponent's press offense system, they got the chance to see the things that they need to fix to be better in the future. We got to experience a new press offense. They did a very good job. Uh, LaGrange did with their press offense. I thought that was good because they showed some different things that we have not seen this season. So we're trying to learn how to press, and uh, those new looks made us uh, recognize something else and, and we see some areas again where we have to improve. With a 1-1 one one start to the 2011-2012 season, head coach Maestri is confident about games down the road, but he says that the players need to keep conditioning themselves before they head into conference play. The only way we can be successful is if we're in phenomenal condition because that's how hard we're going to have to play. Uh, and it's, but it's early, I mean it's not you know, uh, we don't expect them to be in that kind of shape yet, but they don't even know the next level of effort yet that we're going to have to play. So uh, these, that's what these games are for early in the season. But while Maestri said that the team needs to work harder, Will Weathers said that they are already in good shape and that wearing the other team down early will benefit them later on in the season. Uh, we're not tired at all. Man, our, our conditioning workout this, this offseason was, was ridiculous. So. We, I think we get them more tired than we're ever tired. And I think that's going to really help us towards the end of the season when we get in conference. When we play conference games, I think teams going to get worn down, and, and that's when we'll be able to strike. Tiffany Lester, Trojan Sports oh, Now. While the men's team got the chance to even up their record with their home opener, the women hit the court for their first action of the season on Sunday. After jumping out to a seven-point lead early in Sunday's home opener against Winthrop, the Trojans surrendered the lead with 13 minutes to go in the first half and were unable to regain it as they fell to the Eagles 80-66. Despite the loss to open the season, head coach Mike Murphy said he was pleased with his team's effort. I, I'm really encouraged by, by what I saw, and you kind of have to see the forest through the trees. This is one of 29 games. And um, I wasn't sure what to expect out of some people. And, and some of these guys came through in a big way. And I'm, I'm really encouraged about, about what we can do. Three Trojans posted double digits in the match, including preseason third-team all-conference selection D'Angelo Sword. The Trojans did give up 17 turnovers, however, that led to 24 Eagles points. Murphy said while they still have areas to improve in, this team has potential. I think we've got a lot to work with. I think we've got a lot to work on. Uh, but I'm really happy with our effort. I'm happy with our balance. Uh, you know, we had 18 offensive rebounds, and um, you know, we, we uh, you know we shot the ball extremely well from the floor, 41% from the floor. I mean, 39% from the three-point line, over 81% from the free throw line. Those were issues for us last year, and uh, so I'm really encouraged. The Trojans lost their home opener last year to Jacksonville State on their way to a 4-8 home record. Murphy said this team will be continuing to work hard on their way to improving. We're just going to continue to do what we do, which is try to get better every day, you know, keeping things simple and, and, and you know, just focusing on work ethic, playing with purpose and playing with passion. And if we do that, I think we'll have a lot of success. Sarah McCappian led the team with 19 points in the game and was 4-for-4 four four on free throws. Going into this weekend, the volleyball team knew they had to pick up at least one win to have a chance at reaching the Sunbelt Tournament. The Trojans had two matches at home, 
one against the conference bottom dweller in FAU, the other a top team in Florida International. The Trojans got the one win they needed on Friday night, beating the Owls of FAU three sets to one. Alexandra Alexander had 45 assists while Kayla Pickert had 15 kills. The win helped guarantee the Trojans a winning record during the regular season, a first since 2003. But the Trojans had bigger goals and that included a win on Saturday over FIU. Dustin Carroll lets us know how the Trojans fared. On homecoming night, the Troy volleyball team was hoping to end the regular season with a victory against Florida International. In the first set, Troy fought off three set points before losing 28-26. In set two, the Trojans were no match for the Panthers, dropping the set 25-18. After jumping out to a 7-1 lead in set three, Troy would go on to lose the set 25-23. Kayla Pickhart led the team with 13 kills on the night. Coach Sonny Kirkpatrick on Saturday's finale. We knew if we won tonight, we were moving on to the conference tournament for sure. There was, there was, it was guaranteed we were in. And uh, we didn't come out. We weren't desperate. Uh, we didn't go after every ball. FIU went after every ball and they made every little play and we didn't. And uh, they had nothing to play for. We had everything to play for and we didn't do it. And that's, that's what uh, has been really a, a struggle for us as a coaching staff. Coach Kirkpatrick says the team seemed to get nervous as the third set progressed. Progressive starting at that third set. And uh, as the set wore on, we really got tentative for whatever reason. I don't understand. Uh, we have one, one rotation in our serve receive that we really have struggled in all year, and that was the rotation that we gave up six points in a row. This was also senior night where three senior players were honored in Natasha Colonia, Brittany McClellan, and Laura Mackley. Kirkpatrick says that it's disappointing they were not able to get the victories for the outgoing seniors. Seniors have been outstanding through their careers. Uh, I wish they could have gone out with a win and uh, hopefully we'll have a chance to play next week. We've we got to wait for a match tomorrow to see what happens. And uh, You know, they, they did a great job over their careers. Uh, one, one finished out injured, but uh, the other two did a really great job. Dustin Carroll, Trojan Sports Now. Well, the Trojans' fate rested in the hands of two other Sunbelt schools, and luck went the Trojans' way as they were able to claim a spot in the Sunbelt Tournament for the first time since 2005. We will have more on that matchup later in the show. Still to come on Trojan Sports Now, a preview of Senior Day for the football team as they wrap up their home schedule, plus volleyball in the conference tournament. All that and more coming up. But first, I had the chance to sit down with the head coach of the rodeo team and learn what fans can expect at the Trojan Stampede Rodeo. Stick around for more Trojan Sports Now. Trojan Sports Now. 